Hey, welcome hey. to Podcast from the Pit. Uh, we're talking with Darren, and we're talking chaos. Yeah. So, how long did this Kickstarter? Uh, how long has it been going? Um, it's been about a week so far. Uh, about a week. Yeah, about a week, and um, yeah, we're like, I don't know. Uh, I think 28 percent of the way there. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's sort of always like, a big thing at the end, right? Where people yeah, yeah, the big push at the end, everybody yeah. always waits for. Um, yeah, and and also something that we learned in Legends of the Hidden Force, you know, when it only sort of just funded, which was exciting, but was disheartening that we didn't really hit any of the stretch goals. Uh, there's a whole like Kickstarter is totally changed now, so that there's a full couple of months afterwards in backer kit, which that whole phase where you can still continue to pledge and we can still continue to unlock all the higher tiers so it's yeah so it's sort of like even though it's kickstarter is a month uh it's really four or five if you want it to be so right as long as it funds on time that's right we just need it to fund initially and then sorry sorry that we're live and i'm putting a phone in a drawer um the uh yeah and and it's um like i said i said somewhere online somebody had mentioned the um you know uh sort of called back to it or whatever but in backer kit in the backer kit phase we ended up doubling our money um which allowed us to do a whole bunch of you know we did a couple of free figures and unlocked a couple like a kickstarter exclusive figure so yeah, the campaigns, like I said, they, they just sort of run long now. They don't, they're not these short little bursts. So, yeah, I thought, I think we're off to a good start. So, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I'm not real familiar with Chaos yet, looking into sure. it. Uh, like I said, I got in on uh, Legends of the Hidden Force at Joe Thank Fest. You very much. Thank you. I saw your, uh, uh, your panel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it put me over the edge. I was like, "Well, all oh, right, yeah. I, I got it. I got to get in on that." Oh, that's awesome! Thank you. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm glad I did. O ring is my preferred scale, three three yeah. quarter O ring. My preferred scale. I collect more than that, but that mm-hmm. is that's my first love for toys, yeah. and it always will be. I, so, I agree. With, yeah, with all the O rings coming out. Uh, I mean, Delta 17's killing it. Uh, I just got my ghost from uh, Costa Lombo. Yeah, it's awesome. Cause, yep. And then, got yeah, the, and uh, then, Skeletron is awesome. That's right. And then there's uh, Operation Recall. There's uh-huh. he- Heavy Armor Toys. There's. I didn't get in on that one. Oh, no? I don't know. I didn't see a lot about it. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I'm trying not to get in on so many Kickstarters until I start yeah. getting some of them. I, I get it. I get it. There's. <laughs> there's a ton of them out there and and yeah. it's funny i'm um everything i said it to do i wanted to avoid doing well how do i put this i can see the next few years i know enough people i'm lucky enough to know enough people that's not a boast or anything i'm just lucky that i know almost every person that's doing a three three quarter <laughs> inch o-ring line right now and i knew what every we all you know sometimes they're intimately friends like i can talk to john kukovich about anything that we're okay. doing in deep in depth uh whereas you know steve uh, even though he's a really good friend he's pretty guarded he doesn't want to reveal <laughs> any details and so um you know but i at least got us all to us like okay well let's just talk about broad plans so nobody steps on each other's toes like what's everybody doing and then when everybody was like well i'm doing military i'm doing military i'm doing military i'm doing military i was like oh okay so we're all going to be competing against each other i was like why don't we push our military idea back a bit and let everybody come up with theirs first while while everybody is sort of in that feeding frenzy and mm-hmm. uh we'll do some non-military uh to get our feet wet and then and then we'll come up with ours you know so yeah and that's so, i mean that's i believe you work on toys non-stop <laughs> I, yeah you said Pretty that uh, you're always working on you know different yeah. lines oh this one ain't gonna work get rid of it and just yeah you've done it's it true. a long time that's awesome. I absolutely, I love doing it. I, I, I really do. I, I work pretty much 15 hours a day, every day. I don't take days off in my restaurant, but 
in that one hour, two hours downtime I have every night, I'm working on toys. And then when I have the office uh, in the morning to myself, uh, I do a good hour a day. So yeah, I only put in maybe three hours a day, but it's nonstop. Like there's never, I don't take breaks from it. I'm always every day, about three hours a day, I'm working on toys. And when you, that sort of adds up over the years, you know, uh, yeah, there's tons of stuff that I've developed that we're working on bringing out. So you do have a military line. Yeah. Next. That's awesome. Um, That's awesome. Two, actually. Um, the next one I'm doing is Eagle Force in partnership with Big Bad Toy Store and Fresh Monkey Fiction. So that's um, Bill Murphy owns Eagle Force. He has, you know, the owner of all that IP and everything. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing an O-ring line through with him through Big Bad Toy Store for Eagle Force. And then at this, and essentially at the same time, there, there's going to be, uh, or just after, uh, our military line is called IMPACT. It's it's another acronym, I-M-P-A-C-T. It's the International Military and Police uh, Anti-Crime Task Force. And so it's populated not just with military, but lots of, um, um, you know, police and, and various policing agencies. But it's an international team. And um, we've had the characters... Uh, you know, sort of loosely, we knew the character lineup, all the bad guys, all the good guys. We, we've, you know, we know every single character. And then we've sort of loosely started putting some ideas together what the, each character looks like. And I can't show you because I actually don't have it, but only just today did the first f few figures for that line uh, get completed as far as like prototypes and, and whatever. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. So it's exciting. That was really exciting to see that. <laughs> It's always exciting to see something you've been putting a lot of work into uh, first materialized. You're like, oh, my God, it's happening. Awesome. So well, yeah. I bet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I'm excited for uh, do you have I mean, no, I know we're here to talk about chaos. That's right. But yeah. do you have any update on uh, Legends of the Hidden Force? Because I'm really excited for that. Yeah. So I think, again, I sort of explained online, I think. I don't know where, um, you know, I generally try to answer anytime somebody asks and I just then assume that everybody knows. Um, uh, so it's our first time dealing with this factory, but this factory has been wonderful. They, they, uh, they really tried their best. Uh, my, my previous toy company, um, it was sort of in shambles. A whole bunch of things happened inadvertently uh, and unfortunately all at the same time. And one of the things that they that happened was the factory went under and this factory just purely because they're friends with a friend of mine um did what they could to try to take in and help me out and get me back up and running but it just didn't come to pass but just that gesture alone uh i knew uh, those were kind of people i want to work with because you don't really get a lot of compassion in in um, the you know industrial toy making so <laughs> I knew going forward that I wanted to deal with them. And Jason's been producing toys with them for 20 years. Jason Shiremeyer did uh, um, Strike Force Alpha with, with okay. through that, toy, or through that uh, factory. And so even though our construction isn't the same, our figure construction isn't the same, they're familiar with O-ring product. They're fam they, they, they have O-rings on hand. They have the screws on hand. They have J-hooks. So it just made sense to produce there. But... Being that we're the new guys, uh, we kind of take second tier, <laughs> and like they keep pushing parts of us, our production back, and it's really unfortunate because we didn't know that that was going to happen, and kind of wish that they had told us ahead of time. But um, so they produced, they 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 made all the molds, fantastic. But then the molds went up on a shelf, and nobody did anything with them for a few months, and we didn't know that that was happening. They were like. Okay, we're getting started to produce them now. We're like, <laughs> what? You, you, we, you, we didn't know that you weren't producing them. And then right. that's when they were like, oh, and by the way, the arms broke. So we're going to have to retool them, which is another, you know, 45 days. We're like, okay. And then, um, uh, yeah, so then they produced all the figures. So we're like, great, fantastic. So we're on a pretty good timeline. We can, you know, expect these whenever. And then two months later, they came back and they're like, hey, we're getting ready to paint now. <laughs> paint them after you just left them they literally just print like produced all the plastic and then yeah. put it on a shelf and then two months later came back to paint it we're like what 
So <laughs> that's what they just did. Um, they just finished, uh, or they just ran uh, all the painted uh, samples by us, and they're all horribly wrong. Oh and, no! And we we were like, what? We gave you all this material that outlines exactly everything, and your original, um, the few that you did originally looked spot on. They were bang on. They were perfect. So, um, yeah, I've just been far, far, far too busy, and they need so much information from us right now that uh, I, I kind of was like, oh my god, the, just, just to get enough time from me, it's going to push this whole thing back another month. And uh, so Chad stepped up and he's like i will deal with the factory and uh, i'll deal with all that so um, chad's part of whiskey jack but he's sort of the the le the sort of the least involved and he sort of just helps out where needed and so i really thank god he jumped in and and said that he'd handle it so he's gotten them all back on track so now all the paint samples uh, the paint masters i guess uh, are perfect they're exactly where we want them. So painting has started. So then I would only assume painting is going to take a month. Uh, curing takes another month and then shipping takes another month. And that, that we're at the end, like we're, we're nearing the end part now. So unless there's any major part where they have to shelve us again, I don't know, but I would say that we're a couple months away. Sorry for the long-winded version, but oh but, no, 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 that's fine. That it's. I mean, I wanted to hear what was going yeah. on. Uh, in my opinion, Kickstarters, you expect delays, you expect yeah. stuff to take long. Yours is actually coming faster than I thought it would. Oh yeah, awesome. Thanks. Compared to other Kickstarters yeah. I've been yeah. on. So, well, one, now that's one all thing, the news. Yeah, one thing I hope to do. It was my original intent, but I was like, okay, by the third time, if I'm still using Kickstarter, like as a personal goal. If I'm still using Kickstarter at that point, meaning the other things haven't funded large, they're, they're just doing the minimal funding, and uh, we, you know, we still need to come back to people to help us with the tooling and get things going. I, I always wanted that by the by after the third one, if the if there was ever a fourth Kickstarter, that um, it would we would do it where uh, we would pay for or however we could get the tooling done ahead of time, or as best as we could ahead of time. And then when we go to Kickstarter, uh, we're just looking for production costs uh, to cover production costs. And so not only does that mean that we wouldn't need as much from the, the community to raise to get things going, but the turnaround time would be very fast. Like we could at that point, we, we could probably do within six months, you know, from when the Kickstarter ended to when things are shipping. So that's what we're aiming for. It's, you know, that's the next goal. I have to apologize. My dogs are going crazy upstairs. <laughs> That's all right. I, I like I said. I'm going to apologize if uh, if any of the staff walk in and out. We're at shift change right now, and sometimes they leave stuff in my office. So, right. yeah. So, you know, I can't even remember how many figures you had for Buds of the Hidden Force. I lost count of how many. Yeah. Of you <laughs> Originally, we had solicited. We had wanted to do 24. And that was just because we're so excited and we had, we have so many ideas. We have like hundreds of ninjas planned, but we were like, okay, well, let's just start with 24. That's reasonable. But the, the goals were so high that, no, you know, it just didn't make sense. So we decided to end the Kickstarter early before it just became disappointing for everyone. We were like, well, let's, mm -hmm. let's tone it down, retool it a bit and, and just, you know, and, and start with just 12. And so we went with the 12 that people seem to have the most, like we got the most feedback on. People love those 12. So we're like, well, let's just do the Kickstarter for those 12, which we did. And uh, and then along the ways, we made a couple of extras for incentive figures and and uh, a, a freebie figure, you know, um, and which weren't originally planned, actually. Uh, but they all made sense in the context of the greater story. So we were like, yeah, it's a good place that I need to put them. So yeah is uh do you consider it a one and done kind of thing or oh, think no. you'll add on to it oh yeah no we we definitely like we we you, you haven't even seen the beginning i i mean I'll, i'm happy to go into it about a bit so legends of the hidden force it it's it takes place in harai which is a secret sort of city and uh 
there's the multiple factions, the three factions, Aka clan, um, uh, Seichi and Sabo. And those three clans all have, you know, different goals, different motivations, but it's all based around that magical flower, the flower that you do different things with it. You make it into a tea. It does something. You make it into a, you know, a paste. It does something else. It, like any way you take it, uh, it does something different. And they all have, they know that this is this prized possession of theirs that only exists in their city. So they're, they're very conscious and conscientious of how it should be used and distributed and who outside of the, their city gets to use it. And uh, I don't, I don't think I'm giving away too much. My partners might say that I should probably hold on to some things, but so this, that's all everything, all the fighting that happens, all the, the um, stress and strife and, and conflict within the city is just the first chapter. And then in the second city, uh, I'm not going to say who, but there's people that are forced to leave. There are people that have chosen to leave. And then there's others that are coming to get the prize, the, that prized flower. And uh, there's literally, there's, you know, uh, heavily armored armies. There is, um, there's, there's, there's so many other factions coming up that the ninjas have to go up against and, or that the bad ninjas ally with. And um, it's not just ninjas. It's only the first chapter is just ninjas. The second, third chapters they get, uh, there's lots of other involvement that we, I, we just can't wait to show you. Like, I, I don't, I'm gonna say one thing. Um, if you ever thought of merging like 1980s ninja movies with Mad Max, there is definitely going to be some post-apocalyptic uh, ninjas, which I didn't even know what that would look like. And Matt has done a stellar job of making these guys. So I, I, I can't wait for you guys to see all that. But let you know, we got to kind of get, get through the first bit first. So yeah, all right, yeah, you're you're painting quite a picture. You know, I'm yeah. excited. Is yeah. there going to be any kind of uh, comic book or anything to uh, I would love for people? To... Yeah, I would love it. I mean, we're we're all amateur writers, the the three of us, and uh, we've all had various things published, but none of us have ever had a comic published. And um, but we all love story. Like we come at the mm -hmm. figures from story first. We, we you know when we're trying to figure out a figure, we're not like, well, what looks cool. We're like, well, what? Let's figure out a story and the characters in that story, and then that tells us what figures need to be made. Um, so yeah, I would love for a comic book. Matt wrote the first couple of issues um of of the comic and based on sort of a story we co-developed and i think they're fantastic i'd love to see it get into print we just don't know when or where that would be yeah. but same thing with chaos like to me chaos is so story driven and i'm like where where am i going to tell this story because <laughs> it's story driven you guys you know you'll love the characters so much more once you know the story about it all i just don't know how that's going to come i i would love for it to be a comic but We'll see. Story, we'll see. Stories really help. Uh, yeah, you're familiar with Delta 17? Yeah. Okay. There's a character that everybody loves, but I was not a big fan of just because okay. of the way he looked. Which one? Uh, Leon Leonidas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Read the comic. Now I love Leonidas. Oh, yeah. Because that comic made him come alive. Nice. And I just know with you know the figures you have mm -hmm. for Hidden Force, you know, if you get some kind of story with them and those characters are just gonna, yeah, you know, it's gonna be, I know, I, and I've reached out to a couple of artists and I always wanted, like, I don't have, um, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm, it's pretty much premature or, or presumptuous rather, uh, to think that I'm writing quality comics when I've never written a comic before. So <laughs> I have sent it out to a couple of people that I know that are professionals and asked them to read them. And just you know give me some critiques or notes or or would they be interested in a rewriting you know like i'd pay them to rewrite it so that it you know from professional comic writers so we'll see we'll see what happens because i do have the first six issues of chaos written um but i again i don't know if it'll ever come out so and the other thing too though i will say is um i love comics i always have loved comics i haven't bought a comic in we're about six months out from 20 years it's been since I bought a comic but last comic I bought was the day before my first child was born and uh and I've never gone back I haven't stopped loving them I just they just didn't fit into everything I was doing anymore um and 
I think that there's a lot of people out there, I assume, like me, that still like comics and will still read them if given the opportunity, but they're not interested in buying them. So I would try to find a way to get them out there for free. I just don't know that model yet. I, you know, I've worked a couple different ways or I, we'll see. We'll see what's happening. But generally speaking, I, the few that I've tried to come up with, how can we get this into people's hands? It's always been, how do we get this into people's hands for free? Like, I, I would like to figure that out. So we'll, that's we'll awesome. See. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I, I put together a little sc- uh, little slideshow. I'm not really good at slideshows, sure. but I think yeah. I got like 13 of your okay. chaos figures. Do you want to talk I about see. them a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So yeah, Dr. Kiljoy, he is, uh, he's the guy that it's all about, you know, it's Dr. This is all Dr. Kiljoy's plan. It's all his, his, uh, his machinations or his, uh, pulling everybody together. It's, so he is this brilliant, uh, cyberneticist and he's made his billions off of, um, buying and owning patents to, uh, most cybernetics. So now anybody that gets any sort of, uh, um, anything done really that's in any sort of augmentation or, or whatever, he owns the patents, he gets a kickback or a rights or a usage fee or whatever. And it's really lame and mundane and boring, but he's made his billions by um, sort of profiting off of of everyone's pain or, or, you know, in that, I mean, maybe not pain, but, you know, misfortunes. And um, he's done a couple of things in the gray area, some pretty nasty things. And he, you know, keeps getting foiled by good guys. And he's just sick of it. So he thought, why don't I reach out to all the other people like me that are also kind of walking the, that, that thin line or the, they're in the gray area or they're outright bad, evil, you know, and see if they want to join me and uh, take out each other's villain or each other's heroes or each other's nemesis. And uh, it works. So he starts recruiting more and more. And that's where the story picks up is sort of like he, he's on a recruitment drive. And that's what all this is everybody else that's coming up here so every figure are bad guys right they are they're all bad guys there's no no good guys in the line at all the idea being i started off i was like i want to create a line of just bad guys so for people that have big you know the corps uh core collections or gi joe collections or whatever and they just don't feel like they've got a lot of bad guys i was like i want (laughs) you to be able to buy just some bad guys to back up your other bad guys. And then you've got this huge army of insurmountable odds for your good guys to face. Yeah. I think he looks pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I Let's see what the next one is. Oh, Halloween. One of my favorites. Um, yeah. He's, he's one of my favorites in just, uh, like I say, in writing um, the issues you sort of have to find each character's literal voice, like how they talk and how they mm-hmm. interact with each other and how they, you know, and and he's just been the one that was like the most fun to discover all that. Like, he's just an awful person. He's a, he's a self-proclaimed uh, God of mischief or not a God of mischief, uh, sort of a, a demon or whatever of mischief. And nobody believes that he's a demon and he may or may not be, he, he claims to be, you know, sort of kicked out of hell for his pranks and everybody just thinks he's a weird guy, but nobody knows, you know, what his true story is. I mean, you will eventually, but right. nobody really knows his deal. He's, he's too evil for hell. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's too annoying for hell. They there just, we like, go. They're, like, they're done with him. Yeah. Maniac. Maniac is, uh, you know, horrible again at communicating with people. He just talks and grunts and, and I don't know, posturing and, and whatever, but he, he is uh, a pretty awful guy. He, um, he likes car violence. That's his thing. He (laughs) likes smashing cars into cars. He likes committing crimes with a car and, uh, he's the driver of the team, of course. Nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, backdraft. So, Backdraft is the first of a couple of guys that get their inspiration from, um, I'm going to say, the 
Bronze Bombers, which was a, a G.I. Joe um, adjacent or brand of some sort. I mean, Bronze Bombers started off using their old molds or the, the or their own molds or the glue molds. But then they moved on to uh, licensing a couple of the G.I. Joe molds, the official Hasbro molds, and made a series of figures using those molds. And um, so of all the sort of knockoffs or bootlegs, these aren't, these were somewhat endorsed by Hasbro. They literally, you know, leased the molds to them to make these figures. And so this is sort of us uh, going back and um, doing our take on them, uh, uh, on a few of them, at least. So yeah, so Backdraft is the first of the characters in Firebrand, and Firebrand is what we call the the bad guys in um, uh, the Bronze Bombers. They were they were originally called Pyro's Band of Thugs back in the 1980s line, but we've changed it to Firebrand, and um, yeah, they have all fire based weaponry and firebomb, of course, also one of those. Uh, he's the the one, the explosives expert. And Blazer, yeah, and Blazer, you can't tell from there. And Matt thought I shouldn't say anything, said so let just let people discover it. But the helmet's removable, or not the helmet, the faceplate is removable, and uh, there is you know a face under there. Um, but we thought that it'd be fun to just let people discover that when they open the figures, when they get them. Yeah, he was uh, one of my favorites when I was looking through this. And again, oh, yeah? sorry about that dog upstairs. She no is loud. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, and then the heat wave, that's sort of the army builder. The idea being that um, they sort of recruit from who's around whenever they're in in into it whenever whatever so they just hand out that mask and that jacket and give them a flamethrower and or some Molotov cocktails or whatever and you know there's sort of the firebrand in general are sort of insiders their their job is their the way they make their money is to get paid to start things whether it's riots uh civil unrest um uh, you know, even even more, but they, they they go and they go to things, they go to wherever they're needed to, they go to you know wherever they're sent, and they instigate things. <laughs> uh, yeah, Huntsman. So Huntsman is the first of a group called we're call, I'm calling Tarantula. Um, Tarantula is uh, our take on Miguel, which. Again, another G.I. Joe knockoff line. You'll see that that's a running theme. We took all those knockoff lines and we're like, let's legitimize some of them. Um, <laughs> but so European Force was this exclusive toy line in Europe in the 90s. And it like it was bootleg. They illegally were using uh, knockoff versions of the molds of, of G.I. Joe figures. And they did... I think I want to say they did twelve figures, four good guys or four bad guys, eight good guys, and um, uh, they all had all the bad guys. They all had well, every character had foreign names, uh, mostly French, except when it came to Miguel. Every one of them had a different name from a different language. Like one was Spanish, one was uh, French, one was um, German. Uh, so Miguel actually translates a spider. And then all their names were named after other insects. So we just went with that. Uh, Huntsman, like uh, everybody in the team now is named um, after a spider of some sort. But um, the figure, the iconic figure that uh, he's um, looks like, which is Thomas, uh, is Miss. He has a white helmet, which our character will have. And it kind of throws off people recognizing the figure without that white helmet. So nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he looks good too. Thanks. Yeah. And then the spider himself, well, he never came out in European force. This figure was never made, but the package art depicted this figure front and center, but you couldn't buy that figure. So I was like, well, that's the first one we're going to make. It's the <laughs> one that nobody ever had an opportunity to buy. So, uh, yeah, so there he is. Uh, he's the leader of the operation. 
and then Parasite. Um, yeah, so in in my universe or this universe that we're creating, uh, tarantula are arms dealers. Um, they're they're gun runners. They're you know um, their whole deal is getting weapons to and from and arming small militias and and you know um, yeah generally armament sales. Swamp Fire is probably one of my favorites. Mine too. Uh, as much as I love Killjoy and Hal and Halloween and whatever Swamp Fire. So in creating everything and creating all these characters, I knew that this was going to be a story that had a lot to do with Killjoy and Swamp Fire's relationship. And uh, I don't want to go into any of it right now <laughs> um, because that's it's you know the next few years of plots. But right. Swamp Fire is his number two. That's his right hand man. That's his. That's his guy. That when Killjoy needs to send the troops into battle, he sends Swamp Fire to lead them. Um, yeah, and Swamp Fire himself doesn't really remember much of anything. He he only remembers the last year of his life when he came crawling out of a swamp. And and there's obviously a lot of story there, but he he doesn't even know the nature of himself or anything. He just he's a bit of a cipher. And <laughs> but he's Killjoy's number two. Buzzkill. Uh, Buzzkill is just a murdering machine. Like that guy, <laughs> he, he comes with a machete. He comes with a chainsaw. He comes, he is every slasher movie wrapped up into one. And uh, yeah, he's sort of Killjoy's, you know, taskmaster. He's, you can just send him off to go eliminate somebody. And it might take him a month, but he comes back with the job done, you know? Nice. Yeah. I think that's it. I missed one okay. when I was transferring over. No, that's all right. Um, yeah, no, I love talking about them, and uh, I thank you for um, putting them up there. And um, yeah. I, it, it's it's funny. I again, the the short sightedness sometimes. I, I um, to me, I know the characters very very well, and I assume that I've gotten enough of their characteristics and traits out there that other people know the characters now, and everybody kind of well, you know, the, the other whiskey jack guys. They kind of were like, yeah, I don't think anybody knows anything about these characters. And I was like, oh, <laughs> whoops. Okay, so um, so actually, Matt, just today, uh, he we talked about getting the bios out there. And today he sent me um, a sort of a layout, uh, sort of like a rap sheet as if it was their police file. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be working on those in the next couple of days. And I'll, you know, put those out there for everybody, like, just I want to get realize that people don't know or, or might not like these characters yet, but once they read their file card, you know, then they'll um, they'll know them. And I have all of that written. Like <laughs> these characters, yeah. Killjoy, I have, you know, just in his bio, I have three pages of how he should be handled when he's being written. And I was like, oh well, I that sh people should read that. Like then they'll know so much about him. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I mean, you could tell that you put so much into these characters. Oh, Not thanks. just how they look, but backgrounds, stories. I thanks. mean, all it took was to sit through the the panel, and oh, I yeah. was in. Oh, so, thank you. Really, thanks. And yeah. I'm 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 not trying to. Um, I just I did two panels that last. I did one where it was just about Hidden Force, and then one where it was all about everything Whiskey Jack was doing. I don't know if it was it just was, Hidden Force. It was just it, hidden it was all yeah. Hidden Force. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I, we put a ton of development into Hidden Force. I'm, you know, I love it. I love everything that comes out. I love, I, I wouldn't put the amount of time and money into just presenting these ideas to you guys. Uh, right. If I didn't love it, if, if it was half-assed, I'd be like, man, eh, that can wait <laughs> until it's worked uh, and better. And, and you know, that I love it. So, but yeah, there's yeah, I'm picturing, I'm picturing some world building for the, yeah. <laughs> In force, yeah. And do you see a future to where these interact in a universe, or are these totally separate? There's, there. I'll, I'll, I don't. Hidden force and chaos don't currently exist in the same world. They're two separate worlds. One of the things about chaos, and I hope everybody will see it in the stretch goals, or, or I'm going to start. So, in the next few days. I'll be putting up all the things that 
if we get 200 backers, everybody gets this for free. If we get 400 backers, everybody gets this for free, et cetera, et cetera. And they're all weapons and accessory packs. Mm -hmm. And one of them is called the Looking Glass. And the Looking Glass is actually a key part of chaos. It is a teleporter. And it allows them to go from place to place. And they figure out a way to make it go from universe to universe. So <laughs> the mechanics are there. <laughs> yes. These can all interact. But we don't have that yet. We don't have a plan for them to. But yes, the mechanics are there that they could interact. I can just picture, you know, chaos, hidden force, your military line, yeah. your other military line. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, all yeah. one and big then after, world. After the after the military line then comes a cyberpunk line like oh i would love <laughs> for them all to meet up one day and we'll see that might happen um but it's not what i'm driving towards i, right. I want each story to be great but i also want the idea that there are times when they you know all face off against each other i think that'd be great okay yeah no this all sounds great um yeah. thanks hope it I hope it funds quick so everybody can see those stretch goals. Yeah, I would love I, I would love to see it fund. Um I think it will. I'm, I'm I think it will. Know, I, I think I, and again, I think the, the key thing then that I could get out there if I could is that I don't want anybody getting cold feet or freaking out saying, Oh, I wanted the stretch goals, but it's only gonna just fund and we're not gonna hit any of those stretch goals. We will, as long as we fund. Right. Then we can keep going in backer kit and slowly, you know, keep acquiring momentum. Like I said, we doubled our money in backer kit. Um, and then also in the big bad toy store pre solicits, they ended up they ended up ordering so much from us. They're fantastic. They they mm -hmm. they had so much faith in us, they were just like, Yeah, we'll take I'm not gonna say what, but they took so right. much, it just put us over the finish line. We were like, Holy smokes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And that's what led to this relationship. They're helping bring Eagle Force from from the ground up. Like they're they're helping us bring it out um, from day one instead of after the fact getting on board. So um, all those stretch goals keep going like the ones that can only get unlocked if we get to 100,000 or 150. So long as we keep doing those pre-sales and, and what have you, that all counts and allows us to get those new tools yeah. we need and so I'm excited about it. I just know that a lot of people think of it as a one month deal and when in truth it's four or five months. Yeah. yeah. I know I missed on uh Skeletron. I missed out yeah. on that Kickstarter. But I was yeah. able to get in there and yeah. still get one at Joe Fest this year. Oh wow, that's awesome. I didn't realize they were yeah. still off. That's great. Yeah, I was so excited. And that's so another that could be any time. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing too, though, is that in pushing or promoting chaos, um, just in the last two days, we sold another all in three times, like three all ins for the hidden force. And <laughs> I think that people didn't realize, or they did, they'd never even seen them. They were like, Oh, these are awesome. I've never even seen those. We're like, well, they'll be ready in a few months. And they were yeah. like, okay, I'm all in because we've well, left it open still all this time. So yeah. I may have to visit that again. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get them all yet. Yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, um, I yeah, gotta check then, my backer kit, see which ones I did order. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I can even help you with that. I can look it up if you want. Um, but yeah, I, I and I didn't expect that at all. I didn't expect in the promotion of chaos that that uh, people. I think again, I just sometimes I may think a lot and create a lot and think far ahead and and plan out very well, but then I forget about basic things and I just assumed that everybody that was interested in hidden force had already spoken up they already been like yeah i got mine but then i forget that there's constantly new people coming into the hobby and they're like oh my god these are awesome like, i want them and, and so it was it was a happy little surprise to find that we had made you know sold quite a few more figures so yeah yeah i've got a couple friends who uh do o-ring and uh, i know they're gonna circle back because yeah. you know like me i thought you couldn't get them anymore right you had to wait till they were out yeah, so we might have to tell them, and uh, yeah. <laughs> that'd be great. That's awesome, and yeah. everything helps us get more molds made. And really, that's all we're doing. Like, no, none of us are getting any profit or making any money, um, and none of us have any interest in that right now. We've talked about like that's a couple of years from now we can talk about it. If we're making money, then we can start discussing that. But for the time being, it's all about getting tooling paid for, and then getting production runs paid for. And that's all we want to do is just keep getting more tooling made 
more figures of, out there because we have so many ideas and so many things that we want to do that, you know, hopefully everybody wants to buy. Yes. <laughs> she's a big standard poodle. She sounds vicious, but she's sweet. Oh, yeah. Uh, I always tell people that we live in a golden age of toys because we got all these small companies that are putting out the little niche three and three quarter O-rings that we all grew up loving. Yeah, and it's we do. We, we, we are in totally in a golden age of, of O-ring toys for sure. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. And like I say, I love uh, that there's, I, I mean, it's not a strong, strong, interlaced community but everybody knows each other and everybody plays well with each other and we all you know like you might recognize like a certain style of sculpt on this figure in this line and another and you recognize that same sort of style there because we're all drawing from the same talent pool you know we're all using the same talented artists um we're quite often using the same facilities like we're you know three or four brands are under one roof um and and yeah and and i you know marauder john i've said I've, I've i've said this many times because it it had a very lasting impact on me and he was definitely my first mentor in this whole field and he he and i were talking once and he just said yeah stop looking at everybody as competition start looking at them as your allies because a rising tide raises all boats and so the more o-ring figures and the more o-ring companies there are out there the more people start taking notice and then that brings more people over to all of us which are doing things and, and this community of us that are doing things not just this one little person trying to get attention or or whatever and uh so far it's worked i've i've you know i've made sure to keep all my ties strengthened with everybody and 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 we're all collaborating as best we can we all help each other out where we can and yeah and it's starting to you know pay off for all of us we're all finding a, a niche audience that and yeah. i'm pretty happy about it i know because i went in all these kickstars around the same time mm -hmm. and in my head my head canon they're all going to intermingle oh yeah that's awesome yeah i, I think they're going to be great together yeah and my original pitch 15 or so years ago i was saying it to a friend of mine justin i was like so I want to make it like 10 different brands and they're all their own thing, but I want them to be done on the same scale so that anybody can make up their own story. And he right. was like, I don't know if that's going to work. And I was like, no, I'm sure it will. Like, I'm, and I'm just saying archetypes here. I'm not saying these things are come to be right. expected, but I'm like, you know, you take the special op soldier and you take the werewolves and then I bring uh, the magic user over here and like, and I create my own unit or my own little force and I put it up against those guys. And then, and he was like, mm, I don't know. And I was like, I do. <laughs> I, 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 I personally, I think that that is how a lot of people play or they, they put their own, they take their cool looking figures that they love they put them together and and they come up with their own head cannon. and so uh that's what i'm trying to provide now is here's a whole bunch of tools for you to use to make your own head cannon, you know yeah it, it sounds like we'll have a lot of different <laughs> tools yeah. to use so that, that's well, great and that's a yeah and for me um i'm never going to do the same genre twice so like impact is our only military line i mean with the the, the side Eagle Force is a licensed product, so that, to me that's different. But that's our only military. We, you know, and then there's the cyberpunk, and then there's also a steampunk, and there's a superhero, and there's a like there's all the genres you can think of. There is a line, and yes, I have hundreds of characters for each of them already planned. Um, but yeah, we. I know I got to take baby steps, even though I want to run and take big so steps. But baby steps. A superhero O ring. Yeah, absolutely. That, That's the, awesome. Not only that, and, and I'm not I, I'm not going to say names or anything, but not no, only no. am I doing a superhero line, but I was just approached by somebody that's talking about a collaboration of sorts, um, and there's possibly a second superhero line, but it won't be mine, but it will be done in collaboration with Whiskey Jack. So, nice. yeah, we'll 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 see. There's yeah, there's multiple superhero lines in that format planned. Yeah, that's great. Uh, when I was a kid, 
uh, you know, I take my Joes and my He-Mans and all them, I make them superheroes, like, you know, because yeah. there was no real good Marvel figures or DC yep. figures back I then. Agree. Yeah. And, and I would make them Batman, Captain America, yeah. all that. And, and it was hours of fun. So yeah, I can that's just awesome. imagine what an O-ring yeah. superhero line would be. Oh, yeah. You'll, yeah. I'm super excited for that. I like this to me when I, when I started writing everything seven, when I was 17 years old, I started writing and trying to create comics and comic characters and what have you. And everything I've done since then has sprung out of that main baby that I, that is the core of everything. But I didn't think that was the smartest thing to start with as far as the toy line. So it's been parked there, but that literally has over a thousand characters sitting <laughs> there waiting to come out. Um, and and to me, that like every idea has spun out of that. So chaos, hidden force, um, all of the different factions that are coming up, all the different stories, they've all spun out of what happens in the superhero story. So take that as you will. And and yeah, that one has to get a comic. I don't know how, but <laughs> yeah, you would have to. I would think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can I ask an Eagle Force question? For sure. Okay. Uh, now you said it's not your IP. That's right. So, is it the gold Eagle yep. Force characters? Okay. Yep. So it's classic. It's and that's the yeah. thing that the the license dictates that it has to be classic or vintage. Um, I can't do any modern figures. Um, and that's fine. I'm happy too. But I said, obviously, that's very limiting. I can only produce X amount of figures that ha came out in the past. Right. And then I'm done. And he was like, well, when Bill and I were talking, he was really trepidatious about me because I was pushing to add more characters. And he was like, well, <laughs> but the thing is, is he's like, I'll own them. You won't. And I was like, yeah, but you're letting me play in your sandbox. And the best thing I could possibly do is add more things to the sandbox so everybody can have more fun you know like right that's what you do and he's like as long as you're okay with whatever you add to it i own and i was like absolutely so i pitched him a whole bunch of characters and uh he quite he liked a few of them didn't like all of them that's fine <laughs> um but that's where we're gonna start so it's gonna start with just straight up characters you know uh, to start with for the first couple of waves and then uh by about the fourth uh, I, I'll i start peppering in some new characters, both good and bad. But, um, yeah. yeah, and so they're going to be in waves of six, uh, just six figures at a time, and it's going to be exclusively Big Bad Toy Store, but also, um, you know, some people are like, well, you know, that's kind of limiting to have them only available in one place, but Big Bad Toy Store is also helping getting them made. So they're right. exclusive to them because they're literally helping to pay for them to be made. So plus four dollars cool. flat rate shipping, you can't beat that. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, I'm excited about that, and I think that we'll have an announcement in January. Uh, all, all the details, whenever that date that those go up will be, the announcement will come in January. So yeah, all right. I mean, everything sounds good. Uh, do you want to say anything else before we wrap it up? N not uh, really. Anything uh, people need to know. Uh, just, yeah, I mean, if these, if chaos interests you at all, uh, I would hope that you would help us out and get them made. You, we've got a Kickstarter running right now and you can find that by looking up whiskey, Jack toys on Kickstarter or chaos with, you know, the acronym C H A O S with dots in between. Um, and yeah, like I said, there's a couple of figures there for, uh, that are, for, you know, to get us the funding. And then after that, we've got months to get through the rest of them to get to build up enough money to get through the rest. So, so yeah. we can always hit those stretch goals afterwards. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And even if it's not your thing, but you have friends that are into figures or O-ring or whatever, it's super helpful if you let them know that what's going on. Because we are small, not a lot of people know who we are, uh, but we've got a lot of lofty ambitions. So. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> I mean, we're a small YouTube show, but, you know, yeah. one day, you never yeah. know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, I really appreciate this. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I love, I, 
I thank you so much for fitting me into your schedule. I know that uh, you had to go out of your way to accommodate me, and thank you so much for doing so. It's fine. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. Uh, Great. So after, after I stop recording, let's uh, let's check my backer kit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Let's see if I can.